Hello dear chess friends, I'm International Master Andrei Ostrovsky and this is the series of lessons dedicated to defense and counterattack in chess, lesson number three, in which we will continue discussing different methods of defense and some defensive techniques. This first position is taken from the game Clouds uh, Hernandez and we can see that white made a huge progress on the king side. We can see there's dangerous pawns h5, g5 and f5 and this monster knight on d5. So white is ready to open up position of the king side and to come up with a direct attack against the king. Position looks very dangerous so black has to do something. Black simply has no time for passive defense. Let's have a look on, let's say, rook e8 move, preparing bishop f8 maneuver, then simply f6, bishop f8 takes on g7, bishop takes g7, bishop b6, very nice intermediate attack against the queen. Queen is forced to d7, actually only square to occupy, and then knight jumps to f6, forcing bishop takes f6, and after g takes f6, this open g file is simply fatal for black. So no normal defense. White is going to play something like rook to g1, then queen to h6, then even uh, rook to g7 if necessary. And there will be a checkmate very soon. So black has to do something else. Rook e8 simply doesn't work. Black doesn't have time for this passive defense. So what to do in such a situation? First of all, no panic, okay? So you have to understand that uh, only in a situation when you are still in a control, you have chances to protect your position. And in such a situation, it is very useful to think of uh, opponent's most aggressive piece, opponent's most useful piece in the attack. And we saw that uh, in a line uh, with rook e8, white managed to force opening of the king side because of knight f6 move. So actually knight d5 is the most dangerous piece. And one of the greatest methods of defense is to neutralize the most aggressive, the most dangerous piece in opponent's camp. So black in the game found the best move. It is knight to e5. Black's idea is to exchange knight d5. And after that, uh, black's position will be much safer. For example, if white continues with the defense, for instance, queen to g2, protecting the knight, then bishop simply takes on d5, queen takes on d5, and bishop takes on g5. So after exchange on g5 and let's say h6, black has a chance to keep position on the king side more or less closed. So black plays, of course, g6. This helps black to keep g file closed. It is the most important file. After f takes g6 and h takes g6, black's king is more or less fine. Of course, after knight e2, followed by knight e4, white still has uh, great chances and good attacking perspectives, but black's position is not that bad after all. So in a game after knight e5, white decided to take on e7. And after queen e7, White, of course, played f6, uh, aggressive concrete move, at first glance forcing black to take on f6. But that's not true. Black has enough defensive resources to avoid opening of the g file. For instance, if white continues with some preparation, uh, by the way, rook on h1 is hanging. So after knight e5, uh, black not only managed uh, to exchange the most aggressive piece in opponent's position, but also to activate the own bishop and now it controls very important h1 square. It is about to occupy f3 in some lines, so it will be very uh, useful. So if rook goes to f file preparing this uh, f6 move, black has a chance to play bishop f3, just closing this file for a while, attacking the rook and targeting h5 pawn. Again, one of white's attacking pieces here h5 pawn is very important so if black manages to get rid of this pawn uh, position on the king side will be much safer so f6 queen goes to b7 let's say and after f takes g7 a rook simply goes to e8 by the way pay attention to this very important defensive technique it is very common when we have this pattern with opposite uh, side castlings so whenever opponent's pawn appears in front of the king, it doesn't mean you have to capture it. Moreover, in many cases, it is very good not to capture it. 
just to leave it there because this pawn on g7 doesn't attack your king but makes sort of a shelter for your king so this is kind of betrayer right so instead of making everything to make position of the king dangerous this pawn makes it safe so remember in many cases it really helps just to leave this pawn on this position in front of your king and it will be a shelter not worse than your own pawn that's the point so in this particular case the rook on d1 is hanging the pawn on h5 is also hanging so black is about to capture it after that the bishop will get to g6 and black's position on the king side will be completely safe so in the game it was f6 and black played queen to e6 move uh, ignoring this pawn on f6 because taking on f6 was really dangerous if g file becomes open white gets an access to the king after queen e6 white doesn't have this uh, direct access and uh, this makes black's position good so the point here that after f takes g7 rook anyway goes to e8 just like in the previous line ignoring this pawn on g7 and after let's say knight to d4 black has a nice counter attack so instead of moving the queen away somewhere black simply plays knight to f3 continuing the same plan just uh, trying to neutralize most aggressive opponent's pieces so now at the moment it is the knight d4 and knight f3 just uh, helps black to get rid of this knight if knight takes e6 then simply knight takes d2 bishop takes d2 and bishop takes on h1 so in this particular case as you can see black is a exchange up a uh, very good result in a game after queen e6 white play knight e4 immediately but black exploited the same motive the point here that if queen goes to f2 then simply knight takes d4 bishop takes d4 and bishop takes h1 after f takes g7 rook goes away and after rook takes on h1 queen goes to e2 we can see that uh, white's attacking resources seriously reduced so black has great chances even to play for a win in a game after knight e6 knight e2 bishop d2 and f takes e6 as you can see position was simplified now white has no serious attacking possibilities on the king side so after rook f1 black came up with the final defensive maneuver bishop g2 rook f2 and bishop h3 now we can see the plan so bishop is about to occupy f5 square from where it uh, will protect e6 pawn at the same time attacking d3 pawn and also controlling the situation on the king side so white definitely has no chances to break through let's have a look on the other example this position arose in the game between Vitagov and nihua so in this situation we can see that uh, black is really in trouble at first glance because despite being two pawns up black has serious problems with completing development and at the same time there is a problem with the king because it is very exposed there are a lot of holes in black's position so everything looks really depressing but okay black has to be in the control and uh, has to understand what to do in this situation so there are no real chances to simplify a position at the moment so black has to fight with most aggressive white's pieces and uh, if we dig a bit deeper we'll understand that the key piece in this position is of course bishop on e5 it occupies very active position and at the same time controls a lot it prevents normal development of black's pieces and simply blockades pawn e7 e6 so very good position of the bishop and black has to do something with that at the moment uh, of course bishop on e4 is hanging so black made very natural move queen to d5 activating the queen uh, protecting own bishop and also attacking bishop on e5 but white played queen to f4 and now white's position looks simply winning because there are so many different threats including just the simplest it is queen to f7 followed by taking the rook on g8 or after king d7 uh, let's say rook to d1 winning the queen so it looks pretty much devastating at first glance black simply has no time to neutralize bishop e5 it could be done with the help of bishop g7 let's say but after this move of course queen goes to f7 and white wins but black predicted this situation and had in mind very nice tactical resource and the point of course to neutralize bishop e5 so bishop to h6 one of a sudden the core idea of course more or less understood black wants to deflect the queen and if queen takes on h6 let's say then queen takes e5 and 
after eliminating this strong bishop on e5 and getting rid of the own passive bishop f8 black is just fine controlling everything in the center black also controls all important squares of invasion like f8 uh, g7 h8 h7 black protects h5 pawn so everything is fine after queen e3 creating the threat of uh, exploiting the peen along the e file black has another interesting resource it is rook to g5 protecting the queen and now black is about to play rook f5 after which the king will have very safe square on f7 and of course it is just a plan of further simplification of the position that favors black because white has less and less attacking resources and uh, we should not forget that black has two extra pawns so the closer we're to the end game stage the more chances we'll have to convert this material advantage so after bishop h6, the question is why not queen f7, right? Because it uh, looks like after queen f7, white has a chance to win a lot. So queen f7, of course, king goes to d7. And now white has two resources. The one is to play rook d1, winning the queen. And another one is to take the rook on g8. In a game, white decided to win a queen. Let's have a look if it is possible to win the rook. If queen takes on g8, well, black plays bishop to e3. And it appears that white has no normal defense uh, since king h1 leads to immediate checkmate after bishop g2. So after bishop e3 it is uh, necessary to play rook f2. But now despite a material disadvantage black's pieces are much more active. Uh, queen g8 is out of play. It is definitely misplaced. And uh, black has a chance just to play uh, active move queen d2 creating numerous threats including for example, queen e1 check, then queen takes f2 and finally checkmate on g1. Another threat is to take on e2 using the pin along diagonal a7, g1. So white simply has no normal defense here and black ends up with the extra material or uh, manages to checkmate the king. So this position is definitely very bad for white. So white decided to play rook d1 and at first glance it looks winning. But black also predicted this scenario and took on d1. After bishop d1, rook goes to f8. And again, uh, one of a sudden, white's pieces are misplaced and uh, white simply has no chance to save the queen on the board. Because if queen goes away, let's say queen h5, then bishop e3 check and rook f1 checkmate. So after rook f8, black forced white just to capture on f8, after which bishop takes f8. White no longer has the attack in this position, of course, and black simply has two extra pawns. Of course, there are some problems with the converting of this advantage because pawns are doubled, but black managed to do that and won the game. So again, black exploited the same idea. Black used the same method of defense. So to do everything to neutralize opponent's uh, most aggressive, most dangerous piece. It was the bishop on e5, but if compared to the previous example, it wasn't just a regular exchange, uh, it was rather a tactical operation. And after queen f4, bishop h6, well, black predicted all tactical subtleties of this position, but uh, the main idea was to force white to take on h6 and then to take on e5. After that, without this bishop on e5, white simply has no normal chances for attack. Let's have a look on the other example. We continue with the classic game Marotti Rubinstein, and here we can see that uh, position is more or less balanced. However, white's uh, bishops are very dangerous, especially dangerous is the bishop d3, because white's plan is to play f5. It is possible to change the pawn structure this way, after which White will have great chances to exploit diagonal b1h7, creating serious threats along it. And uh, with the help of this tandem, White will have a chance to force further weakening of the king side, and it might lead to a very strong attack. So in this situation, Black decided to get rid of the most dangerous piece, and it is definitely the bishop on d3. So Black took on d3 with the rook. An exchange sacrifice, positional one, of course, black calculated some lines and predicted the changes uh, in the position. So I just want to tell you that sometimes it is necessary to sacrifice something to come up with a good defense. So here black decided to sacrifice an exchange, after which white, of course, has no real chances for the attack. And let's have a look what happens. So bishop goes to e4, 
tempo move to control f5 square, very important one, to prevent white's f5 idea. Also, this helps black to centralize the bishop. Now it controls a lot of important squares. Bishop attacks the rook. Now queen attacks pawn on c4. And white has no chance to protect this pawn because if rook goes to d4, let's say then bishop can get to c5. After which uh, black is just fine taking on d4 and uh, moving the bishop somewhere on g6, covering everything. So black's okay, definitely. After bishop e4, it looks like white has a chance to continue the attack against black's king side, playing rook to g3. Now g7 is hanging. But uh, in fact, black has a chance just to take the pawn. Very calm and concrete decision because bishop g7 fails to bishop f5. Intermediate attack and queen is forced away from the g file after which black simply captures the bishop and black has a material advantage so two minor pieces two great bishops against the rook so black has all the chances to win the game in the game it was rook to d2 a bit passive move and after queen c4 black is definitely okay so black has a great compensation for sacrificed uh, exchange so first of all it is a material compensation a pawn that uh, black just took on c4 another portion of compensation is a positional one because this great bishop on e4 controls a lot and uh, you should never forget black has pair of bishops so sooner or later when bishop f8 will be activated black will have uh, great attacking possibilities so after rook to d1 black decided to cover the d file bishop goes to d5 another good central position which is uh, supported by pawn e6 white played h3 as you can see white already has no serious attacking plan this move was made with the intention of protecting the queen and probably continuing with the f5 but black is first so black plays f5 blockading the pawn f4 and now well black is definitely very good so queen g6 queen took on f4 now black has even two pawns to compensate the missing exchange and now there are a lot of chances to come up with the attack so black needs to protect g7 square after which it will be possible to play bishop d6 and uh, while well, white's position will be very dangerous so in this situation white decided to sacrifice the exchange back it was of course a trap because if uh, black takes immediately on d5 then queen e6 check and takes the rook but black has an intermediate check queen e3 protecting e6 square and after king h1 e d5 queen f5 and rook d8 white took on d5 and opponents agreed for a draw because position is materially balanced probably white has some pressure but not more so that was the third example and here we saw the same method neutralizing the most dangerous the most aggressive opponent's piece to come up with proper defense so here we saw that sometimes it is even possible to sacrifice something to reach this result thanks for your attention see you next lessons